to for my money is the best linebacker I've seen that I've scouted in terms of taking on and defeating blocks. What's going on, guys? TDN scouting staff here to debate the merits of linebacker one in this year's 2023 NFL draft, according to our initial TDN 100 ballot. Each of the five gentlemen you see here submitted their own top 100 ballot. We took the average of all of those votes, and that's how we got to the consensus TDN 100, our first drop of monthly drops from now till the 2023 NFL draft. And we're talking about linebacker one today. I want to start this conversation talking about Clemson's Trenton Simpson. This is a really interesting player for the way the game is played today when you think about linebackers who have to play in space and impact on passing downs. So I'm going to start, Damian, with you, and I want to want to hear your thoughts on Trenton Simpson as a football player and what you liked and one question that you have about him as a player as he continues forward in the 2022 college football season. Um, I mean, the first things that came to my mind when I thought about and after watching him was uh, versatile, hybrid, Swiss Army knife. And he does a lot of different things for this front seven for Clemson. You know, he plays as an off-ball uh, linebacker. He rushes off the edge. He's a blitzer. He'll go in the overhang and cover some slot receivers. He just does a lot of different things. And and, and I think the biggest concern with that, you know, it, it brings up the name of Isaiah Simmons, right? Kyle, like you, you, you wonder, okay, what is his defined role? And for me, heading into 2022, I want to see more of him as a pass rusher because I believe, and I think you listed it in your mock draft when you, in your blurb about him, that he gives you some of the vibes. I'm paraphrasing, of course, of what we saw with Micah Parsons. Mm -hmm. And for me, we know that the NFL is a copycat league, and, and Trenton Simmons is an athletic, physical player, great skill set. I want to see him more as a pass rusher in 2022, Kyle, because if so, and he could develop some of the, the hand moves and really showcase that ability to win one-on-one, -on -one, that really gives you that Micah Parsons type of guy where while right now he may be viewed as a top 25 prospect, we've seen what Micah Parsons has done and how he's wrecked game plans for opposing offenses as a rookie. I think Trenton Simpson has some of those same redeeming qualities. Now, bef before you do me dirty – I want to get the full context on that commentary, right? Because <laughs> Micah Parsons, you don't take that lightly. <laughs> correct, correct. He's more Micah Parsons in my eyes than he is Isaiah Simmons. Uh, but to your point, he's nowhere near the pass rusher right now that Micah Parsons is. And you know that based off of Parsons being a pass rusher going all the way back to high school. Mm -hmm. So that, I agree, is the divide. Uh, but if you put those two guys up and it said he's either – Micah Parsons type, or he's Isaiah Simmons type, give me the Micah Parsons type because I think he gives you much more in a rush role, and I think he's a little bit more of a true backer as mm -hmm. compared to what Isaiah Simmons was. But I would love to hear from the rest of you guys. Uh, Brentley, I'll kick it over to you, your thoughts on Trenton Simpson. Yeah, I, I liked him as a player. I think he's an explosive athlete. I think he's a versatile player, as, as Damian was mentioning. Um, I love the kind of tenacity and play type of money he plays with. Um, you know, I, I just, for me – I think I'm starting to move away from linebackers who aren't necessarily great at taking on and defeating and shedding blocks. And that's something where I thought Trent Simpson, who does have good length, I thought, I thought he struggled. I, I think he was a guy who was quick to kind of get uh, covered up by ensuing blockers. I thought he struggled getting off blocks. Uh, I thought he was just a little light to bang on the box. And I, I do think while the NFL right now is a, is a space game, I do kind of anticipate us seeing a, a, a zig, you know, a zag to the NFL zig where we're going to see a lot more power aspects come back to the league. And you're going to want a linebacker that's some sand in his pants and a linebacker that can really kind of play firm in the box. And I just don't know as of right now if that's Trent Simpsons. And so to me, when I'm looking at him, I see him more as a kind of dime backer, a guy you want on passing downs, a guy you want, um, you know, playing in space. And I, Again, I think there's a role for him. I just have him a little lower because I don't love his ability to be a good run defender on the early downs. No, I see him pretty similar as Brentley. Go ahead, Joe. Go ahead, Joe. I see him pretty similar as Brentley does in terms of I love the space ability. I love the matchup ability. Love using him in the overhang. Love his athleticism and pursuit. I think he can be a tight end eraser. I think he can play good matchups 
in terms of in the slot against some of the bigger receivers. Like there's so much that he can bring to your team, but I, I think you just have to be mindful of what he isn't. And that's not a guy that doesn't project well to taking on and banging in the box. Like, like Brentley said, so if he can showcase more in terms of block deconstruction and taking on blocks and playing off a of contact, well, yeah, that's going to increase his valuation. I, I have him as a top 20 player. I love, I love the skill set, but I think you just have to have an awareness as to what he does bring and what he doesn't. And, you know, if he, if he wants to be viewed as more of a co- complete player, then obviously this is going to be the season for him to showcase that. But I still like what he offers despite not showing that, that take on ability. Cause we've seen this like, like a Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa, what he showed us that first season in Cleveland. That's good. We like that. And that's fine. You just have to be mindful again, like I said, what he is and what he isn't. Key. Yeah, I agree. And I'm, I'm glad that you brought up the name, uh, JOK, uh, Joe, because I think the Isaiah Simmons comparison is, is not correct, right? I, I know that, you know, from surface level, a lot of people throw it out there because of he's from Clemson, he's 6'3, 6'4, plays multiple positions. So it's easily, it's easy to just say the Isaiah, Isaiah Simmons comparison. But one thing I will give him credit for is that he plays well in the box, right? Like, and, and what I'm saying is that he's just, he's instinctual. I don't think he's great at taking on blocks, but when he's a, when he's an edge rusher, when he's a blitzer, you see that he has the instincts to, to play that position well. So the position for me that I think would be best for him would probably be like a four, three weak side linebacker where I don't mind him running up the field with running backs on wheel routes. And then like you also said, Joe, he can cover tight ends. So I'm extremely high on this guy. Like I, I think he checks majority of the boxes. The only one is that I don't know if I want him playing from B gap to B gap, but I have no problem with putting him as a defender around the football and making him make plays because his closing speed is, is special. So what's what's fun about the linebacker discussion with this specific lens to look through with TDN 100 in this first iteration of it is there's four backers that made the top 100. And the top three are all separated by five spots on the consensus board. It's very, very crowded with a lot of, a lot of differing opinions. And, and the next player that I want to bring to the table before we talk about the actual way the consensus rankings fell uh, is a guy that I have to start with Brentley on. It's Noah Sewell, Sko Ducks, linebacker. He talked about wanting linebackers that can get off of blocks. And whoa, buddy. If there's one thing Noah Sewell is, it's physical. So, Brentley, talk to us a little bit about Noah Sewell, what you see in his game that you like, and one thing that you might want to see him take a step forward on this year. Yeah, so, I mean, for the same reasons why I'm not, like, all the way in on Trenton Simmons, and again, kind of how Joe says, I like the player. You know, don't get me wrong, I love the player. Are the same reasons why I'm all the way in on Noah Sewell is because, you know, this is a guy who's 6'2", 255, 260 pounds, who – to, for my money, is the best linebacker I've seen that I've scouted in terms of taking on and defeating blocks. When block, when pullers or, or a line guards work into the second level, try, you know, when they meet Noah Sewell, chances are they're going to end up on their butt because Noah Sewell just has so much power um, in his body and he can just explode on you and just, just really just displace you, right? And, and you see that time and time again. And, and not only does he have that kind of block deconstruction power, He's an athletic player at 263 pounds. You see him moving to space. You see his range laterally. You see him, you know, in coverage and, and you know, coverage is an area. Kyle, you asked me, you know, where I think he can improve. It probably is in coverage. I, I do think he's a little over aggressive in man, um, but it's not due to his athletic limitations. I think he's athletic, athletic enough to cover tight ends and cover backs. I just think there's some, some technique stuff he can clean up, but. You know, this is a linebacker who who plays downhill. He has really good instincts, can read run, can read pass. And again, his ability to defeat blocks and, and make tackles is is that's the, that's like the job of a linebacker. When you think of a linebacker, you want someone who can defeat blocks, make tackles, and you stop plays for a short game. And that's exactly what Noah Sewell does. And, and you know, I didn't even bring up his ability as, as a as a pass rusher on third down. You know, that's where I really think he has some value in terms of his ability to kind of get to the quarterback off the edge. And so. I just think he's a complete player. Um, you know, do I wish he was a tick faster? Sure, but then again, he's 263 pounds. And so, um, you know, again, I, I just think I just love his ability for all three downs. And, you know, if there's one linebacker to me that I feel comfortable with, so right now, this is where we're at in the process, it's Noah Sewell. Joe. Yeah, I think with Noah Sewell, you get an enforcer, right? A tone setter for the middle of your defense. A guy like Brentley said is going to play downhill. He's going to blow up blocks, right? There's a physical presence that he's going to bring to your football team. And, you know, as as we see a lot of teams 
gravitating more towards the run. I think it's what Brentley's already said is happening. Like if you've got if you've got the ability to to throw the ball all over the yard, you're going to do that in the NFL. But there's still a lot of teams out there that need to rely on that run game. And, and you look at really the most of the AFC that that's just a big part of of what you're what you're seeing. And obviously Kyle Shanahan's influence and how his coaching tree is expanding, you know, you're going to see a lot more running of the football. And I think that Noah Sewell is obviously that type of presence that you're looking for to play downhill. But, you know, you do get a good amount of range for a 250, 260 pound linebacker. And, and, and I love that about him. I think the big thing for me with Noah this year is just playing with a little bit more control. I, I love his tenacity. I love his urgency. I love the motor, but sometimes that leads to him just not being in good positions to be square and finish plays. And so, Keep that up, bud, but just play a little bit more balance, a little bit more control, and I think you'll make even more plays. So I, I do want to keep us on schedule here. So we got a third backer that's in the mix, and I'm going to come to Keith first, and then, Dame, I'm going to come to you. Uh, but Henry to Oto, uh, transfer from Tennessee to Alabama. This is a guy that isn't generally – talked about in the top tier of linebackers, but yet here he is looking at the ballots and the votes, and he's very much in the thick of this conversation for us and our group. So Keith, I'll start with you. I know you did the regional write-up. Henry Toto, what do you like about him? That he's the most complete linebacker um, of the three that we've watched. I think we just went through two linebackers, right? That were essentially, we can call them polar opposites of each other. One gave you one, you know, a certain set of strength and weaknesses, and then the other gave you a certain set of strength and weaknesses. But I think Henry Toto is that fine line in between of having a run defending linebacker, but then also having that guy that can play in space and that can cover. So when I watched Toto, I thought I had a complete linebacker on my hands. And I'll even go back to this past year's draft I thought he would have been the number one linebacker off the board this past year when you think about his 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 versatility I think this guy can play in a 4-3 or he can play in a 3-4 so I think that's what has me most excited about Toto because we're looking at a rare prospect in the sense of the fact of he's complete like we've done this draft process many years and it seems as though when you're grading linebackers you always have to give up something right like if they're athletic you have to give up their size and their ability to play in the box if they're big and heavy footed and they can play in the box we have to give up athleticism but i think with toe toe you have you don't have to give up either one and you get yourself a complete three down linebacker yeah, I, I agree with Keith. Um, you know, he's instinctive. You, you see it. He diagnoses run versus pass really quickly. And he does not mind throwing his body in the mix in, in terms of t making tackles and taking on running backs in the hole as an alley defender. He showcases that sideline to sideline agility uh, in the passing game and the scrape to flow with the ball on outside runs. Now, someone will look at his size and me and Keith have talked about it. Will his, he, he's not the biggest linebacker. So will that kind of push him out to a 4-3 will instead of playing him as a middle linebacker? Possibly. But when you talk about a guy that has the instincts, the athleticism, and the agility, that's Henry Toto. Yeah, I think the, the, the skill set here that – or the, the word I would use to describe the skill set is balanced. You know, mm -hmm. Keith, you, you mentioned uh, kind of the polar opposites of the other two names that we mentioned in Trenton Simpson and Noah Sewell. I would say, you know, they, they have elite traits, but their elite traits um, – don't paint an all-encompassing picture where you know Henry Toe Oto, uh, I think he hangs his hat on in being an instinctive player. Uh, and I think from a skills perspective, he has a lot of good qualities, but he probably doesn't have like an elite physical tool like the other two guys do. And it's interesting to see how these guys all stack out. We've got five guys on this panel. We've got three linebackers and all three landed in the top 32 for every single guy on this panel, you know, sitting here. And it's fun because Joe, Henry Toe Oto was your top linebacker at 17, and then Trenton Simpson at 18, then Noah Sewell at 20. For me, I had Noah Sewell at 12, Trenton Simpson at 13, and Henry Toe Oto at 19. Keith, Trenton Simpson was one at 10. Then you had Henry Toe Oto at 17, Noah Sewell at 22. Damian, Trenton Simpson at one, uh, at 20, Toe Oto two at 22, and Noah Sewell uh, three at 23, mm -hmm. Brentley, Noah Sewell back at one at, with 12, Henry Toe at 26, and Trenton Simpson at 31. That all falls in line for Noah Sewell from a consensus perspective, courtesy of Brentley and I putting him 12, <laughs> as the consensus LB1 at spot 17 overall on the TDM 100, then Trenton Simpson at 20, and then Henry Toe at 22. So very 
Uh, busy top of the first round for linebackers with three quality players. And we'll see what other players can potentially inject themselves into this conversation as the 2022 college football season plays out. Make sure to check out the Draft Network for the full TDM 100 list, all the storylines you could possibly want, and all the football content you could possibly want to. Oh,